Task Force for Non-Compliance with Coronavirus Health Protection Law 2021. Vice President Nigerian Association of Women Journalists, Zone F, South South, flag off back to school exercise in Yala local government area. Plus, Nigerians lament the day of Salai Misokam, saying it is a generational loss for his wealth of experience in governance. Details in just a moment. Good evening and welcome to the news at seven. I am Erika Ivi, now the news in details. About 100 persons have been arrested by the FCT COVID-19 Presidential Task Force for non-compliance with the Coronavirus Disease Health Protection Law 2021 signed recently by President Muhammadu Buhari, Charles Alpha, who has been monitoring the level of compliance in the FCT, reports. And 85 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC. According to the data, Lagos, the epicenter, has 355, Kaduna, 58, Nasarawa, 46, Kanu, 40, Akwaibum, 33, Kasina, 26, Ogun, 25, Oshun, 21, and River, 16. Wari Edo records 15, Oyo 13, Ondo 12, Boronu 11, Ekiti 9, Kebi 3, and Plateau 2. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 131,242. Total discharge stands at 104,989, while 1,000 586 died of the disease. And moving on, the Vice President of Nigerian Association of Women Journalists, Zone F, South South, Mrs. Udwari Kambubeten Okon, has flagged off the back to school exercise in Yala local government area with a call on the leadership of the state in the zone to replicate the action. Udalitam reports that the exercise was in collaboration with a frontline humanitarian foundation, Pink Africa, and others partners. Three selected schools in Yala Lugu government area visited by the Vice President, Nigeria Association of Women Journalists, Zone F, Mrs. Udwari Obeteng, and other partners include Community Secondary School, Uchu, Ubeck Secondary School, and model secondary school Okpoma. While assessing the level of COVID-19 compliance to safety protocols, the team donated 800 face shields, 1,000 nose masks, sanitizers, metal hand wash stations, exercise books with other writing materials to the schools. I'm very thankful and appreciative for the Women Journalists Association coming to our school to give us face shields the need to adhere strictly to the COVID-19 safety protocols was stressed by Nauch and other partners, even as they noted that the media has a duty to keep the public knowledgeable about developments. Up the campaign here in uh, Yala, local government, Christopher State, is a voice to all other female journalists in the six states of the South South. It's a wake up call that they should replicate this. Go, see, and tell the story. You'll be surprised at what is on ground. COVID 19 is here with us. 
school session in the pandemic. We came to see what happens in the rural spaces. We want to call on Romy and Jules and say, please, while you're taking care of yourselves in the urban spaces, remember the rural spaces where you come from. Help us provide basic things like hand washing equipment. We drop the food pedal hand washing unit and encourage the children. Students and teachers are advised to comply with the federal government's order of compulsory wearing of face masks and observation of social distancing to curb the spread of the virus and also avoid imprisonment. From Yala Legal Government area, Uduak Etam, NTN News. And to the environment, in a bid to promote an innovative erosion control technique across the country, the Nigerian Erosion and Watershed Management, NUMA, a World Bank assisted project in collaboration with the Cross River State Government and a construction company, Akpavin Integrated Service Limited, conducted an environmental and social management plant audit to ascertain the extent of work done so far at the Ecot Nkebre Goli Russian site. Correspondent brings details. Residents of Ecot Nkebre in Calabar municipality are beginning to smile as the Goli Russian project is near 80% completion. The acting deputy coordinator, NEOMAP, Dr. Inyanga Sibam, and its team inspected the ongoing erosion sites for impact assessments. They've promised to complete this by the end of this current dry season, which is about March, April. And um, we know that we are constantly monitoring this process. And we know that with the way the work is going, by the end of March, April, definitely this will be completed. The community leader and some residents narrated their predicaments, which include loss of lives and properties as they applaud the intervention work by the World Bank and the state governments. Well, I am feel happy and cloud to see their intervention and I appreciate it much. So I pray for God to still give them the love to continue this way. I'm so happy. We thank Almighty God that has touched government to come here and to rescue us. It has not been easy. We that lived here so many years ago, we see how the goal is started expanding. That was from 2004. Started expanding from finger one, finger two, finger three, up to finger five, and main gully. So it has not been easy. It has claimed a lot of properties. Even though for God intervention, the movement of that erosion will have expanded up to highway there. The disaster makes us homeless. So many youth cannot do anything, cannot have a, 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 where to stay. But we thank God for the Cross River State Government and the contractor and the World Bank for the remedial of the uh, uh, work. The site engineer, George Brown, maintained that 80% of the job is near completion and promised to deliver before the rainy season sets in this year. As you can see from our site uh, inspection, uh, the job has gone over 80% completion and we hopefully we are looking at the... Uh, uh, trying to meet up with the rainy seasons, you know, the erosion job is very dynamic considering the climatic condition is Cross River State. In Calabar, Erika Ivy, NTA News. Still on environment and away from Cross River State, washing away a property, farmland and worst. Cases drowning of people have been common happenings during the rainy season in parts of the country. And so, with the dry season now, what is happening to most of the flood and erosion-prone areas? Wisdom Jacob has been monitoring the situation, reports on effort to stem the tide in your metropolis before rainy season. Ibrahim Baramasi Babangida Avenue, popularly known as IBB and its environs, over the years have been flooded with devastating effects during rainy seasons. The Akwaibom State Government, in collaboration with Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project, NUMAP, assisted by the World Bank, recently awarded the contract for the construction of drainage system that will control 
the flooding in some parts of the state, including IBB. The project, which commenced from IBB Avenue, cut across Atana Fort, C Division of the Nigeria Police Force, and empties itself at Oboridum, Ibesikbo, in Ibesikbo, a Sultan local government area. To residents, the project is a welcome development. It is uh, constructed. It will relieve us. That water will not be there and that road will be waterable as it's supposed to be. Apart from that, uh, in every construction that comes like that, you know there are other side benefits, as in some of these boys in the streets will have some jobs to do. New students, because that's one of the things that will be giving people this discouragement over the school. They say the school is not really popular, all those things, because of the, if the school cannot take good advantage of the school um, entrance. But for now, I think after the completion, I think it will move better and modernized for people to be coming. Measures to cushion the effect that may arise at where the flood water empties itself will be taken care of on completion. The last meeting we had with uh, New Map and some World Bank staff, we were assured to provide a, a ball communities who are really in need. They are, however, calling on the contractor handling the project to deliver the job and schedule in Uyo. Wisdom Jacob, NTA News. Mornings after this time out. Don't go away. Stay with us. Wow! Like the drops of waters. Slow but steady. We have become bigger, stronger. South South of the Ninja. NTA Calabar. Back with the bar. HD signals. Much watch programs. Banga. Tune to us today and every day. Hook on to us on Star Times Channel 103 and on VHF Ban Channel 9. Watch the best of your delights on Sweet HD Colors. The station for the people. Welcome back to the rest of the bulletin. In Christendom, it is believed that faith is the structure within which prayers are answered. Therefore, to get prompt answers to prayers, Christians must back up their requests with strong faith. In this report, Udia Leo finds out if there is need to hold onto one's faith even when there is a delay in answers to prayers. When Christians pray for their heart desires and the answer to these prayers are delayed, should they continue to hold on to their faith? In a bid to give answers to this question, some clergy have this to say. What you are asking for, God has seen that if he gives it to you that time, it will destroy you. He will Delay it until you have matured spiritually to handle the blessing. So if you pray and the prayer seem not to be answered and you have waited, you have fasted, you have sown your seed, you have done all what you have to do and yet the prayer is not answered. Go back to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Answers are delayed because God loves us. Remember that God loves us and he gave his only begotten son. So God loves us, he wouldn't want anything that would harm us or hurt us. So when answers, in quotes, do not come, it's not because God doesn't care, it's because he really cares for us and he knows that sometimes those things that we are asking for actually can be hurtful to us. These ones, because they have relationship with God, they know God, they know the word of God, they apply patience and then their faith in God is not drifted. They don't shift from God. They still believe in God. Others are of the opinion that unanswered prayers may equally serve 
as an answer to what the person is desiring, as God has different ways of answering prayers. There are three ways God answers. Number one, yes. Number two, no. And number three, later. Those are the three ways. Yes, when it is appointed time, God answers it. Everything work out. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, to everything there is a season and a time. Man's time and God's time are not the same. And the more you know God, the more you will know his ways. Because God does not use one way to do one, all things. So I call on you to give your life to Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, you begin to enjoy God. Even when he doesn't answer your prayers, it will not be a problem to you. Of course, I will still have faith in God. Because God delay is not that he's denying me of such things. He is waiting for the right time to give it to me. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For God not to answer me at that moment doesn't mean that my faith is not working. I will still keep on trusting in him, hoping that he will answer me. For those of little faith, they are being admonished to improve on their spiritual standing with God, to understand God's reasons for delayed prayers. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. If you're just tuning in, this is NTA 29 News, the station for the people. Children are a blessed gift of God. While nurturing the children to grow and be reasonable is a responsibility placed on parents by God. Parental neglect or nonchalant attitude of parents to their responsibility exposes children to unimaginable dangers. This is the situation with some of these abundant kids in the streets of Uyo Metropolis, which has resulted to them hanging around the popular Ibom Plaza Aziz, as they also turn the place their permanent rest home at night. The story of one blessing and divine who got pregnant by an unknown man at the Ibom Plaza is one of these dangers while others are also resorts to harassment of people around the environment for survival. Joy Van takes it from here. My brother is late. Blessing and Divine, 18 and 16 year old, are some of venerable children in the society who face hardship as a result of neglect or mere nonchalant attitude by their parents. In Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital, some of these children make their homes in the popular Ibom Plaza, thereby exposing themselves to danger. Sometimes I'm sleeping in Plaza with many people and these officers. And that will allow me to lie down. I will tell them I don't have where to sleep. That will allow me to stay there with them. Oh, they will cover me in cold because of cold when my body. You are pregnant. <laughs> Eyewitness around Plaza say, despite government efforts to evacuate street children, from time to time, some are still roaming about their environs and most time engage in social vices. Early morning when you come, they say last week, they got drunk. Ah. Drunk where were you from year. here? Eh, last week. Now from here. You stand here, begin to pull now. If not be this uh, army, these people, I didn't come and help them. Okay, myself, I always think, if suppose that girl want to burn a night, a night, how that girl will survive? You know, say, God can help them now. The girl born. If he born, another people will steal the child and go. I have observed this influx of children some underage at the plaza and it's a bit better now but as at last year before december there were so many of them they even had a union to help themselves they sell pure water they sleep at this plaza i interacted with them and asked uh, some of them about their parents they were telling me that they accused them of witchcraft then pushed them out of home then some of them were sent to serve under masters and mistresses. Then they run down. There were very many. They live at this plaza. They had no home, no place. Because of the neglect of their parents, who decided to come and accommodate within the plaza, it is wrong for them. 
because one, they will be exposed to antisocial, antisocial vices. They can, the girl, the female uh, child can be raped. Then the young boys can be initiated into cultism. They, however, plead for more of government intervention. I think a government should uh, create a kind of uh, a social welfare scheme that can help these kind of people that do not that do not have enough support from the family. And although I've seen what government is doing is good by providing free and compulsory education, that will also help in shaping the lifestyle of the child. So government should do more. I want the government to come and help those children that is staying inside Blaster here. Some of them, they will run inside out of the house, as you understand. And some of them now, their, their mother or their parent will take them to the church. You know, say, now it is prophet. Some of them are Confucianists. They can confuse a mother through the child. So some of the children that you see them, around 6 o'clock evening, when you come, they will see a lot of them. If you ask them, where is your mother? Why their mother is alive, their father is alive, they will say, I don't have mother, I don't have father. The only thing you can make is to stop selling back in this place. On the part of government, Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Ini Adiakman, expressed displeasure and reiterated government's commitment to their welfare. government take responsibility for these street children, it is believed that the society will witness less crime. In Uyo, Joy Ubani, NTA News. Now to the world of sport. Tamara Ebiwe has updates. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. Let's begin with talent development as the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, has charged parents to take advantage of every available opportunity to further develop their children in sports. The Minister spoke through the Director, Grassroots Sports Development in the Ministry at Demolare at the kickoff of the Fame Foundation Training Girl Child Football Clinic in Abuja. This is a selfless service giving back to the society letting these children have the sense of belonging that yes they have people watching their back for them and they can aspire to be whatever thing they can be in the world meanwhile plateau united moved up four places on the nigeria professional football standings on friday after overcoming log leaders nasarawa united in a match the seven encounter played at the new joe stadium other match the seven games will see aqua united go against cano pillars on saturday while lobby stars entertain abia warriors on sunday with the clash live on nt network and nt sports Similarly, Premier League action continues on NTA this weekend with a clash between leaders Manchester City and Bottom Club, Sheffield United live on NTA Network and NTA Sports from 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. Other fixtures we see Arsenal and Manchester United go head-to-head -head in the biggest match of the weekend with four matches scheduled for Sunday. And finally, the 2020 African Nations Championship, better known as Chan, enters the quarterfinal stage this weekend with Group A winners Mali taking on Congo, while the Democratic Republic of Congo will face Cameroon all on Saturday. On Sunday, Group C winners Morocco tackle Zambia with Guinea and Rwanda facing off. And that will be all on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. Now, on a side note, Cross River State's Governor Ben Ayadi says the day of Chief Lionel Sokom is a generational loss to Cross River State and the country at large, given his wealth of experience in governance and roles in the development of the Nigerian projects. These echo as one of the many tributes from distinguished Nigerians 
at the funeral mass held in honor at the RCM Catholic Church in Anya, the Quara local government area of Cross River State, Oba High Summit reports. In his sermon, the Catholic Bishop of Uyo Diocese, John Naya, lauded the contributions of Chief Line Yuzokom to the Bekwara Nation, Cross River State North Sectoral District, the entire state across party lines, and Sushu clans. Bishop Aya recalled that the support for his people and the late Chief Okom with the title of Ada Bekwara, which means the father figure of Bekwara Nation alongside many other state and national awards, including the officer of the Order of Niger, UUN. He charged the family to celebrate the late icon and take solace in his life of service. Here in Bekwara, he was born the father. And when, as he was, he made time to be really close to his people. He knew the high and the lows of this Bekwara those who go down there, those four old men and men, he knew every other by name, he knew every family, and was concerned about the well-being of the people. The funeral became what may be described as a festival of eulogies, as Nigerians took turns to condole the family of the disease and to highlight the impactful life of the late Adabekwara. Um, Adabekwara was brave. It has to be your face when he feels. But when he's supporting, he does support you with the last very prayer of peace. Adabekwara will give you the right eye to honor his words. He was a man who was full of intellectual faculty. Adabekwara was largely and fully called was a father beyond our lives. Clearly, he stood this world in a manner of an uncommon colossus, covering almost everything that came his way. She both built a political brand, a political dynasty in Constitutional State, that saw the names of chairman of councils, House of Assembly members, members of the National Assembly, and even governors. The children of the disease said their late Patrick was a man who did not compromise his integrity, describing him as a bridge builder who devoted his life to the service of humanity and God. A memorable day. It's the day that we've laid uh, my dear father, Chief Linus Emonshio, come to rest. And, and as a family, we will remember him fondly and we will try to feel into the large um, shoes that he has left behind. We will try to ensure that his values of generosity, honesty, integrity will be upheld. The late Adabekwara is survived by his wife, six children and other relations. Oba Heisent, NTA News. On that sort, sad note, we draw the curtain tonight, but before we go, a recap of the top stories. The presidential tax force on COVID-19 at the Federal Capital Territory has arrested about 100 persons for violating the Coronavirus Health Protection Law 2021. The Vice President Nigerian Association of Women Journalists South South Zone, Zone F, Udwa Ikan Obeten Okon, has flagged off back to school exercise in Yala local government area of the states. It was also in the news that Nigerians are lamenting the death of Sir Linus Okan, popularly known as Ada Bekwara, noting that it is a generational loss to the states and the country at large. Thanks for watching. Good night.